Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Ben, and welcome to part 10 for our Godot 4 Heart Platformer tutorial series. This free YouTube series is made possible by the people who support me by purchasing my Godot courses. And if you're interested in that, there's a link down in the description and the pinned comment. In this video, we're going to be creating a menu. And we'll be uh, learning a little bit about Godot's control nodes again. So let's create a new scene here. And we're going to do an other node. And the first node that we're going to look for is called a uh, margin container. So all of Godot's control nodes uh, are generally UI nodes. And they, there's two main types. There's normal control nodes and there's containers. Now containers will always have container at the end of their name and they manipulate their children's position. So the minute you add a node as a child of a container, or at least a control node as a child of a container, you're relinquishing control over that node's position, uh, direct control over that node's position. You would then control it through the properties in the container. So. A margin container can be used to add a margin around a certain space. So let's have this margin container. We're going to come up here. We're going to set its anchor to uh, full rect. It's that one there. And inside of this margin container, we're going to add another node. We're going to do a center container. OK, so we've got our margin container and we've got our center container. You can see the center container automatically takes up the space inside of the margin container. And that's because it's a child of the margin container. Any, uh, any control node you put inside of the margin container would do that. Now, our margin container has these things called theme overrides and constants. And this is where we can set our margins. Uh, and we could come in here, we could uh, set these like this to, say, 16. Now, if we set all of those to 16, that's margin left, top, right, and bottom. Then if we click on our center container, you can see that it is now has those margins to it. Okay. So inside of our center container, we're going to add another container. This is going to be a VBox container. Now, a VBox container, you can see it is this tiny point, and that's because it's inside the center container, which is compressing its size all the way to the center. It's forcing it to the center, even size-wise. So in order to increase the size of this VBox container, we need to add some children to it. So let's add a couple buttons. We'll add two, actually like this. We'll call this one start game. And we'll call this quit. This. And then our start game button, we can call, say start game. And our quit button, say quit. Of course. Now, uh, you'll notice that these buttons are, first of all, they're automatically centered in the screen. That's thanks to our center container. And then they're automatically stacked on top of each other in a uh, like a vertical stack. And that comes from the VBox container. It automatically stacks anything inside of it that way. So we have our margin container, which technically we don't actually need the margin container. Uh, in this case, a center container alone would be fine. But you could use a margin container, for example, to uh, if you wanted to slightly adjust where these were. So like, let's say they're perfectly centered right now. If we come back into our margin container, we could turn off uh, margin left, margin top, and margin right. And what that would do is it would only leave the bottom margin, and it would push the center container up a little bit, um, pushing these buttons up a little bit in the scene. Now you could if we didn't have the margin container, you could just move the size of the center container to do that as well. So there's multiple ways to do this. Uh, I think for now what I'm going to do is actually right click on the center container and do make scene root and then delete the margin container. And then we'll call our center container here start menu. We'll save. Save start menu. 
Okay. Now we're going to give it... Oh, uh, we do want it to take up the full uh, screen again. So we're going to set the anchors on the start menu uh, on our center container. Okay, now when we come to our project settings, we want to come into run and we want to set the main scene. We don't want it to start on level one anymore. We want it to start on our start menu. So we're going to select our start menu like this, save the game and run it. And now we have this start menu, but we can't actually do anything with it right now. Uh, and I'm actually surprised that we can't click on these buttons. I would expect to be able to click on them. I know why we can't click on them. Okay, this is good because this is a really common mistake that happens. It happens so often that it just happened to me again for like the hundredth time. I've been using Godot for, oh geez, uh, like over five years now. I don't even know. And uh, I still do this. So what's happened is if we run our game uh, and then we come over here into the remote scene tab, you can see we have our start menu here and our buttons. And we should be able to click on those buttons, but we can't. Well, if you look at our level transition, we have a color rect here. And guess what? This color rect is technically on top of our buttons. And all control nodes by default will capture the mouse. Well. I don't know if all of them by default, actually. That may have changed. I can't say for sure. But most of them, by default, will capture the mouse input uh, and prevent any control nodes underneath them from receiving that mouse input. So even though our color rect is technically invisible right now, it is eating our mouse clicks. Okay? So if we come into our level transition right here, and we click on, uh, we, and stop the game, and we click on color rect here. If we come into mouse, you can see that the filter is set to stop. We want to set it to ignore. That way, what, what is this new property? I've never even seen this one. Force pass scroll events. Interesting. I'm sure that's useful in certain cases, but I haven't, I don't know that I've experienced a use for it. Okay. Uh, shiny, shiny object syndrome coming through there. I was like, ooh, Godot 4, it's new. What does it do? Um, the filter property here, will set it to ignore. That way, this color rect will not ever eat the inputs. And if we run the game again, we should be able to click on our start and quit button. And you see that we can do that now. Okay, so we're going to come into our start menu. We're going to add a script to it. And we want to hook up some logic to these buttons so that we can do something when we click on them, right? So uh, we, can, we, can, we can connect to them through signals. So we'll click on our quit button here, and we'll do pressed, and we'll connect the press signal to the start menu. And then we'll select our start menu and do the same. Now for the quit button, we're going to do get tree.quit and that will quit out of the game and for the uh whoops i actually did that in the start but and that would be a troll on our players um i don't like the order that we did this in i'm actually going to swap them so that they're in the same order as the buttons are in the scene okay and then for start game we're going to do get tree dot change scene to file and the file we want to do is level one that okay so the difference between change scene to file and uh what we have before which was change scene to packed is that this um wa wants to grab a file so you give it a file path and change scene to packed uh, is expecting an actual pack scene. So it doesn't want the path to that file, it wants the scene itself. And um, in this case, it's easier to just use the file. But in the other case, because we're exporting a pack scene, it was easier to just send that pack scene to change scene to packed. Okay? Now if we run the game, we can quit. And if we run the game, we can start game. And there we go. 
Uh, it would be nice to use our level transition stuff for start game though. So we can do level transition dot fade to black. Um, and then we want to await this, right? And then over here, we'll do level transition dot fade from black. And we don't need to await on that one. We can just let it do it. And if we click start, fade to black, and then we come here. So perfect. Uh, let's see, there's jump. Okay. And that's looking pretty good. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to give our player access to the start menu with a controller. This game, it doesn't make a lot of sense to use the mouse on the start menu and then the controller or the keyboard in the game. So inside of our start menu, what we can do is we can add a uh, ready function and we'll do um, pass for now. Okay, if we click on 2D, we can get back into here. So Godot already has systems set up to automatically um, determine a lot of information for navigating UI. Uh, it handles a lot of this for us, which is really convenient. But what we, ha what we do need to do is we need to call a function called get focus. Now focus is the word that Godot uses when it comes to um, keyboard input on control nodes like buttons and stuff. It uses focus. Where is the focus? Is the focus on this button? That's basically like saying that's the button that you're, you're on. And then if you press the down key on the keyboard or whatever, it would, it would switch from this button to this one down here. And that would be your new focus. Okay. Uh, so in the same way that when a mouse is hovering over a button, that button is kind of focused on by the mouse, uh, we have that same logic for the keyboard. But in order to do this, we need to get access to our start game button. Now, in the past, we've been, uh, we've been holding control, right? And dragging over to get an on ready variable. And it gives us this nice little green path with the dollar sign in front of it. However, uh, in control nodes, it's pretty frequent that the scene structure will change as you, as you add more stuff to the scene. And so it's, uh, this, path right here might change. So Godot 4 has a feature called, if you right click on a node, it's called uh, access as unique name. So we can click on our start game button and click access as unique name. And it puts this little percent sign here. And then if we click and drag from here and hold control, same way we did before, instead of using a dollar sign, it uses this percent sign and it just has the start game button. It doesn't have a path. And so what it's done is it's created a, it's created, it's used this name right here as a way to access this. So no matter where you put this node in the scene, this will always access it. And I recommend you do this with control nodes because inevitably they will ch change, not always, but very often. And so I think it's, I think it's best to use this by default with control nodes. So now that we have access to our start game button, we can come into the ready function and we can say start game button dot get no grab, grab focus. Okay, so what does this do? This grabs focus on the start game button. You can see we can use the arrow keys to navigate between start game and quit. However, WASD doesn't work. Okay, so if we come into our project settings, and we come into our input map, uh, we can do show built-in actions. And all of these UI actions, like UI accept, UI left, UI right, these are the actions that are used for control nodes. So we want to set these to use our same controls. So for UI accept, we're going to add the J key. Okay. For UI left we'll add the a key for ui right we'll add the d key for ui up we'll add the w key and make sure you sh do show built-in actions otherwise you won't see any of these because they're all built in and ui down we want to add the s key that will allow us to use asdw now by default they use the the 
um, the D-pad on controllers, but we also want to use the joystick inputs as well. So we're going to come up to UI Accept. We're going to add the B key, which is um, the A key on an Xbox. That's what we're using for jumping. Uh, for for left, we're going to add joy pad to the left. Right, we'll do joystick to the right. Up. My mouse might be dying. This might be just in the nick of time. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think I've added them all. Now if we run this, we can use the controller to navigate these two uh, buttons here. And we can press the B key or the B button to start the game. And there we go. Ah, no, I'm gonna die. Okay. Okay. Come on, man. There we go. Okay, so now we have a simple start menu and I've shown you how to use focus in order to grab focus on an element and then Godot automatically handles the rest. Now Godot is smart enough to know that um, if you're using a VBox container, that pressing up and down should cycle through the different nodes in that VBox container. And even if you have multiple different containers with buttons in them, Godot is actually pretty good at automatically generating the what they're called as focus neighbors. Um, so the neighbors to, to let Godot know which node to go to. But say it doesn't quite do it right. Um, you can set them manually yourself. So if we come into our start button here and uh, we come down to focus, you can see we have neighbor left, neighbor top, top, neighbor right, neighbor bottom, and next and previous, which I actually haven't used those before. But um, you can manually set these. So let's say you have some element over here uh, and you want to be able to access it by pressing right when you're on the start game. You could manually set that that node as the neighbor to the start key so that when you press the right key, it will go over there. Okay, so Godot does a really good job of setting this up by default, but in this cases where it doesn't set it up quite how you want, you can manually set up the focus neighbors. Okay, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, you'll, we'll probably theme this so that it um, matches our game style a little bit better because our menu doesn't look that great. But uh, that'll be the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed this one and learned something, and I will see you all later.